What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets at Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get started talking about Sandy Olderson and coming back in 2022, don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button. If you enjoy my content, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, hit on that subscribe button, everybody. Let me know what you think about the multiple reports about Sandy Olderson coming back in 2022. Do you agree? Don't, do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know in the comments, guys. All right, guys. So, of course, Sandy Olderson, according to reports, are coming, is coming back in 2022, but not in the form of what you have him right now. According to multiple reports, the organization is going to keep Sandy Olsen through the 2022 season as the agreement when he was hired last year when Cohen took over to, to be the president of the New York Mets organization. That was what he was hired for and it was a two-year deal. Anything after that, they can negotiate after that, but it seems like after Sandy Olsen uh, is back in 2022... Whoever is probably the president of baseball operations, which they will hire for next season, Sandy Olson will probably just go out into the into retirement and the president of baseball operations will take over the president's role. So, is it a good thing that Sandy Olson is coming back? We still got the stink and the smell of the Will Pond error. And not only we talk about the Will Pond er error when it comes to to Sandy Alderson, but what we do do as meth fans is that the constant problems that Sandy Olson has had in the trade deadline in the offseason, the lack of aggressiveness, it's the same thing over and over again. And not to fire Rojas a month and a half ago when this team was basically terrible in the month of August. 100% terrible. Who knows? Maybe there would have been a jolt on this team. A jolt of energy if they would have fired Rojas and brought in whoever. Even if it was a bench coach. But there's so many things other than the connection with the Wilpon that Sandy Olsen should not be back in 2022. Yes, that is my opinion. But he has not done a good job. He hasn't done a good job hiring GMs. Which two GMs now are under investigation. Jared Porter is under investigation for sexual harassment. And Zach Scott is under investigation for a DWI. So that is the hiring that Sandy Olsen has done just on the front office. Which, in my opinion, should result in firing just based on his hiring tactics. With the lack of background checks. And the lack of understanding and knowing... What type of personality, what type of guys these guys are that you're hiring and bringing into the organization. That is one of the big problems. The other problem with Sandy Olderson is what happened during the offseason. All the reports that we heard, all of them, were thinking the Mets were going to get two out of the three big free agents. Granted, Trevor Bauer was one of those three free agents. Fine. But nobody knew that at the time. Not saying that Trevor Bauer is the end-all be-all, but there was other guys out there. The Mets needed the catcher, the Mets needed the center fielder. As much as Nimmo has played well this year, let's be honest. Springer has better numbers than Brandon Nimmo. He has better numbers than Michael Conforto. He has better numbers than Dominic Smith. And if you want to throw McNeil in that, he has better numbers than Jeff McNeil. And Jer Springer has been out from injury three times and still has better numbers than all three of them and he's been a very clutch player for this Toronto Blue Jays team which that veteran presence would probably would have worked very well in this roster on this team and that was the one thing that the Mets did not want to give or Sandy Alderson did not want to give an extra one year 20 million dollars to get an all-star caliber clutch player who performs in the postseason to play center field every day. Now just think if we would have got George Springer. George Springer would have been center field. Brandon Nimmo would have been to left. Michael Kufoda would have been to right. That outfield is so much better defensively. That. Who knows how much better this defense would have been. Offensively. Alright. Even if. 
Conforto would have had a terrible season like he's having, Nimmo and Springer would have be great offensive seasons, which this team absolutely needs. And that's uh, one problem. The second problem was JT Riomuto. I know JT Riomuto is not having a great season, but he's damn sure better than James McCann. And we've seen that with just the stats itself. James McCann is not the starting catcher that you give $40 million to. You go all in on JT Riomuto, who actually got less than anybody thought he was going to get. Another situation where Sandy Olson did not read the market. He didn't read the market well on George Springer. Didn't read the market on JT Riomuto. Who JT Riomuto had no suitors except for the Philadelphia Phillies. And if you remember correctly, the owner of the team said, We are not spending money this season, this offseason. So they got a bargain to keep JT Riomuto. Now you can say that JT Riomuto didn't want to come to the Mets. Money talks. If you would have gave him a little bit more than what the Phillies would have gave or gave him the first offer right away, he probably would have signed. And JT Riomuto is 100% better than James McCann behind the plate and at the batter's box. It's just that simple, guys. So that is the other reason. Three reasons so far, and we didn't even get to the beginning of the season yet for Sandy Alderson. So the Mets played well in early parts of the season, looked good, but let's be honest. Were they really looking good or was it the bad division that the Mets are in? Clearly, it was the division that the Mets were in. The Mets weren't playing crazy baseball where they were 15, 16, 17 games over 500. Their big mark was 10 games over 500. That was it. And because the division was so bad, the Mets were in first place. And even when the Mets were struggling a little bit before their downfall in August, the teams just, they just kept them around just enough where any bad losing streak or bad month, somebody was going to catch up. Now we get to the trade deadline. You had the Braves five, six games out behind the division lead. Right? What did the Braves do? The Braves, who lost Acuna, by the way, who lost basically their entire outfield right before, during the trade deadline. They lost Ozuna from um, sexual, um, domestic violence. They lost Acuna from a knee injury. And they had no center fielder, right? So the Braves could have easily called the quits and said, listen, we don't have our superstar player. We lost Ozuna. We have no outfield. Why even try to make an attempt for this division when we don't have our superstar? What did they do? They went, they got Rosario. They got Duval. They got a whole new outfield that solidified their team when they were about five to six games out of first place. And they still went out. And did everything they can to help this team without Acuna. Remember, they had no Acuna and no Azuna. That's ridiculous. But yet, you have the New York Mets and Sandy Olsen say to you that they had a chance to get Chris Bryant and Javi Baez in a package for Pete Crow Armstrong and another player. But they didn't make that trade because they were not 100% sure about the Jacob DeGrom injury. Wait, wait, wait. What? You are in first place. Your offense is struggling. Your pitching was not struggling. They weren't great, but they were keeping team the team in, in games, which they were doing the entire year. They were keeping the team in games where a couple more runs would have would have win ball games. Your offense was struggling the entire year. Why wouldn't you make that deal to get Chris Bryant and Javi Baez? No answers. That's the problem. It's just incompetence. It's just the lack of understanding what this team needs. This team could have possibly been in first place if their offense was average at best. Average at best, guys. That's what you get as a president of baseball operations and a GM. Now, I get keeping him as a president, maybe. But why wouldn't he have influence over certain things that goes on? player acquisition wise why do we expect him just to be on the business side of things I don't understand that I I don't want Sandy Olsen touching this team at all send him on his way pay him his last year of his salary and get him the hell out of here there is so many reasons why from day one he took office in this organization once again when Steve Cohen hired him and the hirings in the offseason from the front offense Jared Porter Zach Scott is problem number one not getting any of the big free agents is problem number two problem number three 
is the trade deadline and not getting all-star type caliber players at the trade deadline for your offense that needed the help. Look what Javi Baez has been doing for this Mets team. Just imagine if Chris Bryant was on this team. He's played very well for the San Francisco Giants. And the Mets did not make that trade because, well, Sandy Olsen was not sure about the Jacob DeGrom injury. I'm sorry, guys. But when your team's in first place, you get guys to make this team better. Maybe you couldn't get the Burials or a good starting pitcher to help out when DeGrom is out. But at least you could have bludgeoned teams offensively with the Javi Baez and the Chris Bryants, putting them with Conforto and Alonzo and Nimmo. I just don't understand it. The Braves did it, and the Braves had injuries at their rotation too. But what did they do? They're like, hey, let's get the bats. We can score runs. So they get Rosario from the Twins, and they get Duvall from the Marlins. They, If you see what the Braves have done, they scored two more runs per game. Two. Two more runs per game than what they were doing before the trade deadline. Two more runs per game. They haven't been pitching great. They've been giving up runs. But they've been scoring more runs, and that's what's been winning them games. So if the Mets would have got Baez and Bryant, they would have possibly won. Look at the last nine games. The last nine losses on the Mets' schedule. They lost by one run. That is a record in Major League Baseball. What happens if we have that offense with Baez and Bryant? Maybe Alonzo will get more protection. Maybe Nimmo will get more protection. Maybe Conforto will get more protection. They would be playing better. That is exactly why the incompetence of Sandy Alderson should not be even near this team. But according to reports, guys, Sandy Alderson will be back in 2022 as the president of the New York Mets. What does that entail? Who knows? Is it just business side? I doubt it. Honestly. I honestly doubt it. Because who is going to be hiring the president of baseball operations? You want Sandy Alderson making that hire when he was shown you he can't make hires? And terrible with vetting and background checks on individuals, male or female, that's a joke. So that just shows you that Steve Cohen is learning on the job as well. Even though he needed the votes, and that's why he hired Sandy Olderson, he had the opportunity to let Sandy Olderson go and get somebody who knows what they're doing. Just that simple. We can talk about everybody that can be available. But at the end of the day, keep it Sandy Olsen, I think is a big mistake. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget, guys, if you enjoy this video, hit on that like button. If you enjoy all my content, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, you know what to do, guys. Hit on that subscribe button. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's a bad idea that Sandy Olsen is coming back in 2022 as the president of the New York Mets? Do you think it's okay that he's the president? Or do you want him absolutely gone from this organization? Let me know in the comments, guys. I really appreciate you guys hanging in there. As always, Mets fans, let's go Mets.